الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكریم وعلى آلہ واصحابہ اجمعین اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قل ان کنتم تحبون اللہ فاتبعونی یحببکم اللہ ویغفر لکم ذنوبکم واللہ غفور الرحیم ربش رحلی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل الاقدتا من لسانی يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِ Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Meaning with the peace, mercy and the blessings of Allah Almighty be upon all of you. We are running this beautiful program concerning one of the pillars of Islam, why Hajj? So that we may understand its importance and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq, give us guidance and an opportunity to do this fulfillment of the pillar of Islam, Al-Hajj. In the last episode, we have shed some light how important it is for a Muslim to perform Hajj. And we have mentioned the eligibility of doing Hajj. And we have also mentioned that we can't bring forth wrong and ingenuine excuses that would not stand in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have also mentioned the consequences that a person can face if he does not perform Hajj. In this episode, which is a very significant episode, we are going to deal with a question, what is the Prophet's way to perform Hajj? And this is a big question, my dear brothers and sisters. Because in Islam, for any action, for any deed to be acceptable, to be accepted, there are two conditions. Number one, it must be sincere. It must be with sincerity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An'am, Surah number 6, Ayah number 162. Qul, inna salati wa Say my prayer, my sacrifice my living and my dying are for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. So any and every act that you and me do in order for it to be accepted, it must be done with sincerity only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first condition. The second condition is that it must be done in the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran in Surah Al Imran, Surah number 3, Ayah number 31, Qul say to them, In kuntum tuhibbun Allah, say, O Muslims, if you really, really love Allah, fattabi'uni, follow me, follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the result? What is the fruit of following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Yuhibibukumullah. Allah will love you. Not just that. وَغْيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And forgive you your sins. وَاللَّهُ غَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most gracious. He is the one who forgives and he is mind. My dear brothers and sisters, there is no way, there is no way that you can actually do any act of ibadah without the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no way that you can find success in Islam without the obedience of Rasulullah There is no way that you can please Allah without the following of Rasulullah Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has given him and his life as an example for us to follow and emulate, copy in our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ahzab, Surah number 3, Ayah number 31, that this love of Allah that you want to gain, this love of Allah that you want to gain, it is none, it is not achieved, my brothers and sisters, except by the obedience of Rasulullah And Allah states very clearly in Surah Ahzab, Surah number 33, Ayah number 21. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا The best example for you to follow is in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in order to do a successful hajj, 
you must follow the way of the Prophet وسلم, in performing Hajj. Prophet's way of performing Hajj, my brothers and sisters, it, it began by wearing Ihram after doing Ghusl. Ihram is again the wisdom if you look at it it's such a beautiful act that it basically and essentially kills the root of racist feeling because you wear two pieces the men wear two pieces of unsworn clothes preferably white it doesn't matter whether you are a millionaire or a billionaire you have to make sure that you wear these two pieces of unsworn cloth. You might be a VIP or a VVIP. In order for you to perform Hajj, you have to wear Ihram. And that gives the sense of equality before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It starts, the moment you wear Ihram, it starts your programming, your preparation, your understanding that you are going to be the guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to wear ihram after taking ghusl, after taking bath. After that he used to make a niyyah. And the niyyah of hajj is the pronouncement. Generally, niyyah we know is an intention. And this is very very important my brothers and sisters. Because all your actions are depend upon the intention. When you make a niyyah to perform hajj, you need to make sure that this hajj that you are doing, it is not for anybody. It is not for anyone. It is not for materialistic things. It is not to make someone praising you that you are a haji, a title. No. Make sure, make sure that this niyyah that you are making it is only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this niyyah, it should start preparation within your heart, in your body, in your mind, my brothers and sisters. It's a programming of the body and soul. It's a preparation of your heart. It's a preparation of your mind that you are going to be the guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are going to do the absolute obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are going to abstain from all kinds of haram for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you need to pronounce this niya, labbaik Allahumma hajj wal umrah, or umrah wal hajj. This is the pronouncement that you used to do. And then there is a beautiful chanting that unites all the hajis, all the hujjaj. My brothers and sisters, it is called as talbiya. Talbiya is a beautiful chanting, beautiful phrases. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Here I am. Oh Allah, here I am. Labbaik, la sharika laka labbaik. Here I am. I associate no partner with you. Inna alhamda. All praises are for you. All blessings are for you. All kingship belongs to you. Oh Allah, here I am. I associate no partners with you. This is a sense of programming that you get. The time when you make this talbiya. And these are very powerful statements that should go deep in your heart and that should reflect in your mind that you are going to present yourself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are going to testify the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are going to be among all the brothers and sisters to unify to celebrate that unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is very powerful thing, my brothers and sisters. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ used to do. It's a programming towards righteousness. The eventual or the bottom line of Hajj is in the remembrance of Allah and declaring that He is only one. 
with no partners, no associate with him. And this in itself creates that sense of understanding that within or without Hajj, we have to make sure that we cannot, we cannot associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a Haji, he prepares his mind, he prepares his heart, he prepares his soul, he prepares his body by stating again and again, Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik. Here I am, O oh Allah, here I am. Labbaik, la sharika laka Labbaik. Here I am, I associate no partners with you. Inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika lak. All praises. There is no praise that belongs to me, that I am going. No! You need to make sure and declare that all praises, blessings and kingship, authority, ownership belongs to Allah alone. And you have to make sure that you associate no partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to first make ihram after doing ghusl to reach, to understand, to, 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 to know the sense of purity, internal purity and external purity by wearing ihram and the sense that gives the message of equality before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of all the people. And also he used to make niyyah by pronouncing it and then he used to make this talbiya that we have just chanted labbaik allahumma labbaik labbaik la sharika laka labbaik inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika lak may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to practice may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to perform hajj as it was performed by muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order to achieve the real fruits from Hajj. With this, I would like to end this episode. Wa akhiru dawana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam Ala rasulihi al-kareem Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim Rabbi shrah li sadri Wa yassir li amri Wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani Yafqahu qawli Dear brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Meaning with the peace, mercy and the blessings Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Be upon all of you Welcome to our program, Why Hajj? A very significant episode that we are running through, dear brothers and sisters. We are talking about the Prophet's way to perform Hajj. As we have mentioned, there is no way that you can actually achieve your objective of Hajj without following the way of Rasulullah In fact, your Hajj will never be successful. It will never be accepted in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it is not done according to the way of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And indeed, it is the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He 
taught us all the actions of performing Hajj through the example and a practical example of the life of Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him in the last episode we have mentioned how we begin our Hajj by uh, by wearing ihram which is the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam after making ghusl we have mentioned that we make niyyah and this niyyah is intention is very clear it is done for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have also mentioned that we make and recite and chant this talbiya and that is labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk, la sharika lak. So we are spiritually and psychologically and physically prepared for this beautiful act of ibadah. And now our journey, it goes further. It goes as a first step after doing these things. It goes as the first step in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a moment, my brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, I've been there. And it is such an exciting. You will be thrilled. You will be moved by Allah. When you experience this performance of Hajj, when you get into Al Kaaba for the first time, you will have a feeling which you will never have this ever before because you are there in the most blessed place you are there in the most pure place al kaaba my brothers and sisters the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the blessed house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the moment you are there the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to do tawaf tawaf is a circumambulation the seven rounds that you need to go round of Kaaba starting from Hajr Aswad it is better that you kiss it if you can't you should touch it if you can't then you can at least show an indication of your hand to Hajr Aswad Hajr Aswad and you can begin your um, uh, you, you can begin your tawaf and it reminds us again that all the people from different backgrounds, from different culture, from different uh, color, status, they all do the same practice, my brothers and sisters. They come and they began their tawaf by kissing, touching or indicating your hand to Hajri Aswad and you began. Four men the first three rounds it should be Ramal which means you need to walk faster a lighter jogging that you need to do for men and the rest of the rounds you can do normal and in these rounds you can actually ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything you can actually ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what you want you can make any dua that you want to make but the last corner between Rukn Yamani and Hajr Aswad, we are told by our Prophet وسلم, to recite this dua in particular. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adab al nar. O our Lord, O our Lord, give us in this dunya and in akhirah and save us from the punishment of the hereafter. This is dua which is recommended and is a sunnah to recite other than this you can make any dua you can recite quran because this is also a dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact the 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 best dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala best reminder of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you can make all these duas and once you complete seven rounds circumambulating to kaaba once you are done with the tawaf you have to go behind maqam ibrahim Maqam Ibrahim is a place where Ibrahim alayhi salam he stood and built this Kaaba and raised the call to the people of the world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed these symbols. My dear brothers and sisters, you need to pray two raka' behind Maqam Ibrahim if you have this place to do so, facing towards Kaaba. 
and Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to recite Surah Al-Kafirun, Surah number 109, in the first rakah, and in the second rakah he used to recite Surah Al-Ikhlas, Surah number 112. Again, point to remember, point to understand, ponder and reflect that in first rakah he used to recite Surah Al-Kafirun. And we know the background of Surah Al-Kafirun that we, the Muslims, our belief should be uncompromising belief. There is no exchange, there is no alternative of our belief. Islam is an uncompromising religion in terms of giving away Islam and, practi and practicing something else. We can never, we can never have this exchange as Prophet ﷺ clearly denied this offering of the mushrikes of Makkah who after they were broken that Muhammad ﷺ will not be convinced they gave an offering that you worship our gods for some time and we will worship yours. But make sure as Rasulullah ﷺ did, we will never compromise on our deen. This is a blessing and the greatest and exp expensive and precious thing to us, our faith. And we said, Lakum deenukum wal yadeen. To be is your religion. You are free to practice what you want. But we have to present the truth. We have to present the truth. So they can follow what they want after we presenting them the truth. To you is your religion and to mine is my religion. In the second rakah, we recite Surah Al-Ikhlas as a way of Rasulullah Sallallahu It is the touchstone of theology. It is the declaration of our faith. It is the definition of our Creator. It is one third of the Quran. It is the greatest Surah that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala includes in it. The characteristics, the qualities, and the names and attributes. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say, He is Allah the one and only. Allahu samad. He is absolute and independent. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Wa lam yakullahu kufuan ahad. And there is nothing like unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we pray these two rakah as a sunnah and we move to Zamzam. We drink Zamzam. Again, remember. Remember that this is the same water while drinking my brothers and sisters that this is the same water which came as a gift which came as a as a help to Hajra alayhi salam. You see you need to understand and remember this because believing that when you do something good the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come for sure. So you drink the Zamzam water and you move to Sa'i, which is a, a name between two symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Safa and Marwa. And you need to make that round trips of Safa and Marwa. You need to begin your trip from Safa and end with Marwa. And you need to recite this dua and this ayah mentioned in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, ayah number 158. In Safa wal Marwata min Allah. Indeed, Safa and Marwa are the symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the things that you do when you go to Hajj is you revere, you honor, you honor the symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you begin your Sa'i, this round trip from between Safa and Marwa. You start with this dua, an ayah from the Quran, from Surah Baqarah, Surah number two. Ayah number 158. When you do this, Sa'i, this round trip, in between there is a place, again you need to make sure that you need to do Ramal, and that is fast walking. And that is for both men and women in order to remember the struggle, the sacrifice that baby Hajra did at that time. When, he was, when she was in search of help, when she was in search of water, to make sure that she gets satisfied. My dear brothers and sisters, after performing this sa'i, you need to go and sacrifice and cut your hair. And that's how you complete this act 
in Haram before you go to Mina for the 8th Dhul Hijjah. These are the ways that you need to perform and practice because this is the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I would like to end this episode with a reminder for you to reflect and remember my brothers and sisters. You need to study the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you go for Hajj, you will remember those things and you need to study what are the rights that you need to perform during Hajj. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he taught explicitly to Sahaba and he said to them, learn, learn from me the rights of Hajj as I don't know whether I will live for the next Hajj or not. He taught us and Sahaba, sahaba learnt. We need to follow the same. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Dear brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu meaning with the peace, mercy and the blessings of Allah Almighty be upon all of you Welcome to our program once again, Why Hajj? It's a beautiful and a very relevant program and we are into a very significant subject. We have touched some portion of it in our previous episode by mentioning that the Hajj in order to be successful, in order to be acceptable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has to be performed the way Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him did. So we'll continue our journey in order to make sure that we follow the life and example of Muhammad peace be upon him in the journey of lifetime and that is Hajj. Dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept this as an obligation upon us by stating, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, ati Allah wa ati Rasul. O you believe, obey Allah and obey his messenger. So we have no way out. We cannot adopt any other's way. We cannot make our own way. We cannot follow any methodology other than what Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him has given us in order that we may successfully complete the acceptable Hajj, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to fulfill this performance of Hajj as per the way of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So let us continue our journey of Hajj. In the last episode, we have mentioned that Hajj begin. It, it begins with, with uh, the putting up of Ihram, as Prophet did, and then make a Niyyah, and then start your Talbiyah, that is, Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik, La Sharika Laka Labbaik, Innal Hamda, Wa Ni'mata, Laka Wal Mulk, La Sharika Laka. Moving on, on this beautiful journey of Hajj, comes the day of 8th Dhul Hijjah, 
where you are supposed to be in the state of ihram and go to Mina and spend your night in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in praying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the whole night you need to make sure that you take absolute opportunity in order to fulfill all your wishes ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever you want and that is the place of Mina where you have to be there throughout the night and you have to perform Fajr Salah and then move to Arafah and that is Yawmul Arafah the ninth Dhul Hijjah and this is the greatest day of Hajj it is the day of Hajj and it is the greatest day, day in which Dua is the most powerful weapon that you can use it is the day of Dua my brothers and sisters Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to move to Arafah and there is a khutbah and salah you combine the salah of Salatul Zahar and Salatul Asr you make sure that you reflect and understand when you are in Arafah remember remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell to the angels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will boast he will boast in front of the angels and he will say look at this look at my servants look at them my sincere servants what brought them here they came for my call they came to fulfill their obligation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will boast in what an honor for the hujjaj for the pilgrims that they will get on that day of Arafah that they can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything that they want and Allah will accept their dua and that is the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all their sins of the past subhanallah can you miss this opportunity my dear brothers and sisters the day of Arafah is the greatest day it's a big day of Hajj and that's the day that every person should make sure that you should not get involved he should not get engaged in any other activity he should be purely asking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever he wishes especially he should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him a person should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make him in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in al jannah that is the great day my dear brothers and sisters yawmul arafah it also reminds yawmul arafah the day of arafah it also reminds us that we will be gathered again in a similar fashion the whole world all the people will be gathered one day my dear brothers and sisters and will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to remind ourselves of that day and Yawmul Arafah is a powerful reminder for all of us to reflect remind and prepare for that day my brothers and sisters so ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness on that day ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in al jannah on that day my brothers and sisters after Yawmul Arafah you see you you move on to Muzdalifah you go there and you collect stones you collect stones again you collect stones in order to make sure that you deny the cursed one you are preparing yourselves to fight to wage a war against the cursed one the shaitan an open enemy for all of us who deviated millions and billions of people throughout the history and who is deviating us if we don't get in the in in, in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be deviated will be lost so you are there collecting the stones and you go to the to Mina in order to pelt stone on Jamra after pelting the stone on the bigger one you go back 
to Masjid Al-Haram, to Al-Kaaba, you make tawaf and you come back again to Mina. You come back to Mina and you continue your stone pelting. You make sure that you give sacrifice. You make sure that you cut your hair. And that's the Eid, Al-Adha for you. You, you make sure that you give, you give your hair as a sacrifice again. You give the sacrifice of an animal, which again, my dear brothers and sisters, reminds us about the life of Ibrahim salam. When we pelt stone, we remember, we remember that Ibrahim salam he waged a war against shaitan. He denied the offer of shaitan when he came to him, Stating, O oh Ibrahim, it's just a dream that you saw and you are going to sacrifice your own son based on a dream? Come on, it's just a vision, just a dream. But Ibrahim salam, he was the truthful one, sincere one to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not listen, rather he felt stone and that's the sunnah of Ibrahim salam that he fought against shaitan. So you prepare yourself that you are throwing and fighting against shaitan and you are making, my dear brothers and sisters, this sacrifice of an animal and you are leaving your hair for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which again reflects and shows that we are prepared to offer anything and everything for the sake of Allah, knowing full well Knowing full well the reward of Al Hajj and that is going to be Jannah, inshallah. Knowing full well that the reward of, of Hajj is that it will wipe your all past sins. Knowing full well that the, the beauty of Hajj will help us to be a better Muslim. So, after doing this, celebrating Eid al Adha, you will, you will go back. To Mina, to, uh, to, to, to Masjid al Haram, in order to perform the tawaf, and that is going to be your tawaf al Wada after completing the 11th and 12th Dhul Hijjah. After pelting these stones, you will go back and do tawaf al Wada, and that is how Prophet did in order for us to take benefits and learn the wisdom behind each and every act my brothers and sisters the only key for you and me to take the real fruits from it is we need to study we need to study make sure make sure that your Hajj it should be authentically reported it should be according to the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because imagine you make all this niyyah, you make all this struggle, you make all everything. You make everything, my dear brothers and sisters. And you finally came to know that all what you did was not according to the way of Rasulullah. Everything will be lost because no deed will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it is not in the way of Rasulullah. So you can't risk all these actions. You can't risk this great beauty and the act of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at risk. You can't. In order to avoid this risk, you need to consult authentic scholars and you need to access and read, understand, know the authentic way of performing hajj Dear brothers and sisters, the success is only in the obedience of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is the reason we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us understand the actual and correct way of performing Hajj, this beautiful ibadah, according to the exact way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all the actions, all the things that is done with all sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to accept from all the hujjaj, their deeds, their niyyah, their struggle, their sacrifice, 
in everything that they do during the part of the Hajj. We end this episode with the same prayer that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our Hajj and that's the greatest achievement indeed and that is only possible if it is done in the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhiru dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.